name of Jesus, we give you, God, all the praise tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise his name, praise his name. I don't know about y'all, but I am still feasting on that powerful message that we received this morning. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be paralyzed by the wrong questions or asking them the wrong way. Amen. Think about that. I'm glad to have the Holy Ghost. How about you? Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful to be filled with God's Spirit? Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. It is good to have Pastor Bartlett here. He's from the Phoenix, Arizona area. And he's just traveling through and visiting with us for the night on his way to Oklahoma. Amen. And we want him just to give us a short testimony. Brother Bartlett, God bless you. Amen. He pastors a, sounds like a thriving, anointed church. And uh, several different ministries in his Swahilian and all these other kind of Helians and whatever they are. <laughs> Amen. Uh, go ahead and give us a word of testimony. Brother. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. When I first looked at the crowd, I wanted to say, Yatahe. But I looked again, and I decided I'd better say, Dio la bendiga todos. But if I were home, I would say, Asante sana. Because we have 160 Congolese refugees in our third church of the day. God has been so good to us for 31 years. We've baptized people in Jesus' name after they have repented of their sins. 62 years ago, last March the 27th, I received the Holy Ghost. I'm the first person that I ever saw repent. I'm the first person that I ever heard speak in tongues. I didn't know, uh, this pulpit knows more about God than I did. Now when I bought a Bible, I bought one from the uh, Pentecostal publishing house so you know this is the real Bible because it's got the print on it I watch this church almost every Sunday evening when we get through with our Sunday night church on YouTube and I watched you and I said I got to visit that church but now brother Brother Baldonado visited our church two or three years ago. So when you come on, I always look for him, but I never see him. So turn the camera one of these days, get this corner so I'll know where to look next time. Thank you, Pastor. I just, I'm on my way to Oklahoma to speak at a camp meeting in Oklahoma. I'm gonna visit friends. My wife is in heaven, but her people are from Tulsa. I grew up in Kansas first Christian in the history of my family and I'm so thankful so thankful for Holy Ghost people that taught me this good way you know every now and then and and I know when the pastor says make it short I know what that means because I tell that to every one of my guests but every now and then you're going to run across somebody and they're going to say hey you people are the new guys on the block but you know since the day of Pentecost, our kind of people have been here on planet Earth. We're not Johnny come lately. Last week I heard our general superintendent, Dr. David Bernard, give some statistics. In North America, 4,700 churches. Around the world, we have over 42,000 churches and preaching points. So when we walk the streets of our city, you hold your head high. Don't you be ashamed under any circumstances of who you are tell your young people tell your young people not to take a back seat to anybody anytime anywhere holy ghost people will rule in the millennium hallelujah my isn't it good to know that we have brethren of like precious faith all over this country hallelujah I tell you what, I believe in being apostolic. I said, I believe in being apostolic. We don't come to church to sit here and act like a bunch of frogs on logs. 
we come here to praise God hallelujah hallelujah praise his name thank you brother Bartlett for a powerful testimony and I don't have a clue uh, what he was saying there I mean I talk like that when I'm speaking in tongues I don't have a clue what it is but amen hallelujah but we appreciate him being with us here tonight once again I do want to say a, a great big thank you and uh, to the, our uh, brothers and sisters here who have done so much to keep things rolling and to uh, and to keep uh, the, 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 the church fundraising and all these things happening a church doesn't operate and center around one individual I know the pastor amen is is there as the shepherd and that's fine but there is no way in this world that I can pastor this church and do this by myself amen there's no way that you can do it by yourself we're part of the family the family of God amen and when I hear and meet new brothers and I and people from around the country who who serve Jesus it's like I was at an airport here four or five years ago I can't remember I think I was flying either to Florida or, or I was flying to uh, uh, Memphis Tennessee wherever I was headed to, to preach somewhere I remember uh, sitting there at an airport and and, and uh, hundreds and, and thousands of people packed up I believe it was in Dallas Fort Worth the airport is huge there I was sitting there and, and my mind was thinking about the services and things and what have you ahead. And uh, in, in walked a, a lady and, and she, she had this long dress on and her little hairstyle. And, and immediately your, your, your antennas pick up and say, she's got to be apostolic. <laughs> now the next thing I do, Brother, uh, uh, brother Stewart, is that, and then if this offends you, then you're just going to have to get over it. Amen. I look and see if they have earrings dangling from their ears. Then I look and say, is there rouge on their face? Makeup? Okay, they're passing all the tests. I am not going to go introduce myself and ask, are, are you apostolic? If they got all that stuff dangling all over them. Come on now. It makes a difference. Amen. The Bible says we're going to be, we're going to be hated for his name's sake. He, we're going to be known by, by what we preach and what we profess and how we live. When a lady looks like a lady, people are going to know. You must be from that apostolic church over there. You know, there's a lot of people that go to apostolic churches that don't change their lifestyle. Come on now. That's called uh, charismatic as far as I'm concerned. Amen. Anybody can say I'm a Christian. But it takes somebody special to be a Christian. Hallelujah. And I love going up to them and shaking their hand and say, what church are you from? you got to be apostolic. And it, it, it's, it's amazing to see their eyes light up and, and the smile come on their face. And this particular couple pastored a very large church there in Tennessee. And uh, we got to visit for quite a while. So it's, it's awesome to be able to meet brothers and sisters of like precious faith wherever we go. And I agree with Brother Bartlett. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Sisters, be proud. We we went walking. That we we went to Golden Corral after service for dinner, and and uh, when we got up, there's all of us, the, about six of us, uh, and I, and and when we started filing out of there, I seen a lot of heads turn and look at these sisters. You know what I did? I held my head high, brother. That's right. We're different. That's right. We're peculiar. That's right. We are set apart from the world. Go ahead. You can make fun, laugh if you want. But friend, I, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to be a part of this. Amen. I don't want to look like a bunch of, oh, I just got to say it. I'm getting old. A bunch of floozies. I want our ladies to look like ladies. And our men to look like men. I'm not preaching tonight, but I feel it. Hallelujah. We don't want sissy men. Come on, we don't want sissy men. God don't want a sissy man. You're going to live for Jesus. You're going to be a man. That means when you get married, you marry a woman. 
I, 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 I guess I didn't say that loud enough. When you get married, you marry a woman. <laughs> Ladies, when you get married, you marry a man. Hallelujah. And I better stop there. It's not my night. Hallelujah. No, no, I, I think I beat them up bad enough Wednesday night. <laughs> Y'all still love me. Hey, Amen. I know you do, and I love you. Uh, I love and appreciate Brother Stewart, his family, as we spent time with him this afternoon. I got to really, really experience the, their mindset, their, their heartbeat, and I, I, just listening to them, I was able to really, really perceive that they truly, truly love Jesus, and they truly, truly want to be in the will of God. Amen. This morning when he presented his mission and uh, what they're going to be doing and then, then went on after that and preached a powerful, powerful message. I didn't tell him anything about anybody. And I'm sitting there going, ooh, that one hurt. Ooh, he got another one. Oh, that was an uppercut. <laughs> oh, there, there, there's, there's a cross corp. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, Jesus, I hope they don't think I told The Holy Ghost knows how to work through the preaching of the word and through the man that preaches the word. I still haven't told him much about anybody. Amen. Matter of fact, I don't really think we've talked about anybody here. So in just a moment, we're going to call him up. And I want him to preach to us again. You know what? I don't want... When there's men that come with such high recommendation. As, as brother and sister Stewart, as I, I, I called brother, brother Howard, and I, I, I was going to tell them that they didn't show up. I was, was going to say, hey, brother, where, where are those people at? They didn't show up. But I couldn't do it. <laughs> and then, then, then this is part of his fault. And I said, hey, he, he said, we was going to tell you that he wouldn't preach somewhere else. They was going to give him a bigger offering. And he said, oh, he better not. <laughs> You got no brother Howard. Oh, Lord. You'd have been having a phone call. I guarantee you. And you might still yet. <laughs> Amen. But uh, anyway, uh, I am very, very blessed and honored to have this couple with us here again tonight. He's going to preach to us. Please be attentive. Please think about what God wants in your life. And those of you that were here this morning and heard the powerful, powerful portrayal of God's word understand that God has something else for you tonight every service is unique it's special don't shove it to the side if you got a shovel and you're trying to shovel it to your neighbor or over your back I pray that God breaks your shovel it's for you it's for me brother Stewart come on up here preach to us the word of the Lord would you stand as this brother comes to preach for us god bless you my brother we appreciate you amen thank you pastor fisher for those kind remarks and uh thank you church for receiving us and uh allowing us to be here i i do not enjoy being where I am not welcome. And I, I sure enjoyed being here with you this morning. You made it so easy to preach and uh, allowing God to have his way. And we want to do that again tonight. Amen. Amen. I, I believe the will of God is always doable. Amen. I believe God has a purpose for every service. Amen. That's why I believe it's important that we're in every service. Right. Amen. I have been in situations where work or something had me away from church and get back and hear the reports and just hang my head and think, I knew, I knew that message was going to come while I was gone. Amen. And I don't want to I don't want to miss what God has for me. We want the will of God in our lives. Thank you so much for praying for us. And uh, w without the good saints of God, what we're attempting to do would not be possible. 
Amen. And so it's by your prayers, your giving, your love that my family and I are able to answer the call of God and uh, depart for Africa in about four weeks. And uh, we are excited to get there. I, I spoke with one of the pastors in my hotel room earlier, and um, I'd ask you to pray uh, this week. It's, it's, it's hot here, and that's not what I want you to pray about. <clears throat> but there is a rationing going on of water and power and other uh, fuels and necessary things in Africa right now in many parts of there and the man I spoke to said I'm having to conduct all of my business From 10 p.m. To 4 a.m. Because that's the only time they turn the power on And so as you can imagine uh, If you've ever been without power for a long period of time you understand how how desperate things get uh, how to prepare meals and and so forth becomes pretty difficult would you pray that there would be a break in the economy there and things going on there that are keeping good apostolic people from having the, the bare necessities. So I'm, not, I'm not praying that the, the, the bountiful blessings of heaven would pour. I just, I just like for them to have some water to drink <laughs> and, some air, and maybe some air conditioner. If they, have to, if they have that, most of them don't, but they need the electric. Uh, would you just remember to pray for Africa this week that something would break and that these good folks would, would uh, get some relief. Amen. We, we put our table out in the foyer there. Please stop by and visit that. Again, I mentioned uh, the good saints of God. These, these Bible bookmarks are for you. Please take one. It's, it's, it's a small token of our appreciation. But we are so thankful for each, each one of you. Please take one of those and remember to pray for us when you're reading your Bible every day. Amen. 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 How about we have some church tonight? Amen. I don't feel like this church is done having church for the day. I believe, I believe somebody wants to hear from God today. I believe somebody come back to tonight saying, well, I, I, got, I got more room in my spiritual tank for God to fill it on up. Amen. And we want to let God be God tonight. Amen. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. We begin in verse number 1. First Kings chapter number 18, verse number 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to shew himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Skip down with me, if you would, to verse number 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Amen. We're going to have a move of God here tonight. Amen. I'm going to preach to you for a little while tonight with your help. He still answers by fire. Amen. He still answers by fire. I believe the will of God tonight is for every person in the sound of my voice to leave here full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. I believe that everybody that's here tonight who came with a sickness or a disease, that the Holy Ghost fire is going to fall. Amen. And we're going to see the miraculous happen tonight, not because I'm here, not because you're here, but because the Spirit of God is about to fall tonight. Because the Spirit of God who consumed the, the sacrifice in the days of Elijah is going to fall in this place tonight before we leave. Clap your hands, lift your voice if you believe the Word of God tonight. Why don't you just shout out to God with a voice of triumph? Why don't you mix the Word of God with faith tonight as you begin to reach after God? Oh, come on, church. We can have that Holy Ghost move before we even read an introduction. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you need something from God tonight, I... There are those times when you come to service and you just begin to, to plug in and you feel like it's going to happen any minute, any minute. I, I want your faith and your expectation in your God to be high right now. When, while the word of God is being preached, I want you to get out some faith and mix it with the word of God tonight. I want you to respond when the spirit of God begins to move on you. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, I want you to have it. God wants you to have it tonight. If you've been seeking it for a long time, tonight is your night. There, it's not the will of God for you to go years and years and years seeking the Holy Ghost. It's to whomsoever will. Amen, amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some years back, uh, we had a piece of property, and uh, like most rednecks do when they have a piece of property, I decided I needed to start a fire, and uh, had some brush and different things from uh, just clearing that I needed to, to burn off, and so I stepped out there one day, and put some fire to that old dead wood and it began to kick up and I went about doing my business and next thing I know the wind picked up and began to blow and uh, that fire went from a little old brush pile to an acre just that quick and I thought oh Lord what am I going to do because there was dead grass everywhere we had had an ice storm and a lot of trees and things were down, and so there was, there was fuel everywhere. And all it took was one spark to ignite what turned out to be burning of half my property, uh, jumping the neighbors and burning part of theirs. I almost burned down the neighbor's home. Amen. If you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> Amen. But... I learned a very valuable, several very valuable lessons that day. Um, but fire, uh, it likes to spread. Amen. And if we could just get a couple of people in the house tonight. Come on. Come on. All right. Uh, we just get a couple of people in the house tonight. There's plenty of, there's plenty of fuel in the house tonight. Amen, that somebody's going to receive something before you leave in this place. Amen. But this, this story we read in our text from Mount Carmel seems to be a pattern revealed there in this showdown. A couple of noteworthy components to what went down there that day. First and foremost, Elijah had faith in God. There was no doubt, no unbelief present and what he was doing there that day. He believed he was the only one living for God that day. Amen. And God gave Elijah instructions. So that's the difference between us. One of the many differences between us and a charismatic movement. We don't cast out the instructions. We don't cast out the word of God and just claim the spirit. 
Amen. We got to have word and spirit. We got to be obedient to our God. Amen. And so Elijah received some instructions from the Lord, and he was willing to obey them whatever it cost him. Whatever it cost him. Amen. Are you willing to pay a price to get what you need from God tonight? Are you willing to, to take a stand? Amen. Are you willing to take a stand for what you believe and for your God? Amen. Consider standing before thousands that day in opposition on the mountain. Knowing if this don't go as planned, this is about to be a bad day. And, and these preachers are, are chuckling because every one of us has stood up and declared what God said to say and went, you're going to have to do it, God. And so this was high stakes for Elijah. And he understood, if this don't go the way God put it in my heart, I'm a dead man. And lastly, there was God's response to Elijah's faith and his obedience. And he sent the fire. There's something about faith and obedience that gets the attention of God. Amen. There's something about a heartfelt apostolic in need of something. You see, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, the Bible said God looked upon their affliction, but he also heard their cry. Amen. It takes more than just having a need in this place tonight. You're going to have to be willing to exercise some faith in your God to get your need answered. You're going to have to be willing to be obedient and cry out to the Lord and make your petition and your situation known unto God. When Jesus went into the temple, there was a man there that really, according to the law, shouldn't have even been in there with a withered hand. And Jesus said, hey, why don't you stretch that far? Get it out of your pocket. Get your situation out in the open before God. The altar is a place of transparency. The altar is a place of honesty between you and your God. And you're not going to come down here and cover things up with a little fig here and a, and a leaf there and expect you to get anything from God. But faith and obedience always get God's attention. They always it is attention. And so this threefold characteristic of faith and obedience and God's response of the supernatural is still very much in effect today. When we obey in faith, God will send the fire. Amen. No doubt there are people in this place. Maybe you hadn't been coming that long and you've been watching. You've been looking around. And you're finally past that place where you think everybody's crazy. I remember the first couple of times I was in an apostolic church and they began to do what apostolics do. I said, I ain't never going to do that. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, you, you're about there. And you're to that place where, you know what, they, they're good people. But I just don't know that I want to act out like that. I don't know if I want to respond to God like they respond. Well, you might, you might set them down and listen to a testimony or two. You might listen to their story and what God's done for them. And it might stir up a little, a little something in you, a little bit of faith that say, well... Maybe there is something to this bucking and shouting. Maybe there is something to this running the aisle. Maybe there is something to this clapping your hands and shouting for God. Maybe there is something to this holy dress the pastor preaches about. Amen, amen. James said, James chapter 2 verse 18, Yea, 
a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O man, wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Amen. Well, I just believe God. Okay, good. You're halfway there. You're halfway there. But how about you show your faith by your works? How about you show your faith when the Spirit of God begins to sweep through here again? And you do something a little bit different than you've always done. Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same results. Jeremiah said, hey, I wasn't even going to mention God anymore. But it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. And when the Spirit of God gets to moving on your situation and you got faith in God, it demands a response. You can sit there and look at me like I'm crazy, and I am. Bless your heart, and mine too. But uh, I told the school kids one time I was preaching in chapel. It got a little tight, like school kid chapel does. And uh, I said, y'all can sit there and look at me crazy if you want to. I started preaching in a nursing home. <laughs> That'll make a man out of you right there. <laughs> Amen. And so... Uh, you just sat there if you want, but you're going to leave like you came. You got to be willing to respond to God. Amen. What you do or don't do often is a testament to the amount of faith you possess. You sat there with your hindquarters anchored to that chair. That lets everybody know, I ain't got any faith. Amen. We'll turn this peer pressure around a little bit. Amen. We'll, we'll get the church up and going here in a minute again. They're all going to look around to see which one of you just sitting there staring at me. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to help you understand. You got to respond to God. You got to give God something to work with. You got to give God something to work with. He wants to answer by fire. But what he's looking for is some faith in the house tonight. He sees your need. He knows you need a healing. He knows you've been seeking the Holy Ghost. But you're just sitting there doing nothing. Isn't going to get you anything with God. Amen. Amen. Preacher, get up and preach his guts out, and you stare at him cross-eyed, but let some, let some uh, fornicator grab a football and run down the... You sure get emotional then, don't you? You sure get excited. Well, praise God. Amen. Matthew 3 and verse number 11. Oh, we need the Holy Ghost. If there's ever a day and hour that people needed the Holy Ghost, it's right now. When I heard that prayer request go out this afternoon or this morning, I thought that young man, he's the Holy Ghost. That's what he needs is the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Matthew chapter number 3, verse number 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall. If you don't have the Holy Ghost tonight, you need to read that. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. It's going to get all over you. And you're going to be a different person when you get the Holy Ghost and it starts burning on the inside of you. You're going to leave this person, this place different than you came. Amen. 
You got to want it. You got to want it. You got to have faith in God wanting to give it to you. You got to have, you got to believe that it's for you today. Quit buying into the lie of the devil that says it's not for you. It is for you. It's for whosoever will. And if you plan on going to heaven, if you plan on going to heaven, Jesus said you got to have the Holy Ghost. And when you get it, you're going to speak in other tongues. Charismatic preacher talking about, I know I got the Holy Ghost because I felt a warm feeling. Well, bless his heart. I walked outside in Gallup, New Mexico today and got a warm feeling. But when I got the Holy Ghost... Oh, an old drug dealer, thug, punk kid turned out to be a missionary to Africa because the Holy Ghost changes everything about you. You got to have faith. You got to have faith. I wish I had time to tell some of you my testimony. Because there's people in here tonight. You believe it. You done too much. You gone too far. God can't give people like you the Holy Ghost. He gave it to me. And I'm not going to sit up here and talk about my past tonight. We're going to glorify God. We're going to see the Holy Ghost move. But suffice it to say, there have been far worse jokers than you get the Holy Ghost. There have been people that are way worse than you got the Holy Ghost. There have been people way better than you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Elijah said, bring me my boo. You bring me my sacrifice, and I'm going to get to work on it. They sang that song this morning. You provide the fire, and I'll bring. Yeah. You come down here tonight as a willing sacrifice, broken before God, honest before God. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, God's going to provide the fire because he still answers my fire. He's still giving people the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it takes some breaking. Sometimes it takes some preparing. Sometimes it takes some commitment that I'm going to do some things different than I've been doing. True repentance. I said true repentance. Coming up and telling God I'm sorry because I've been smoking and drinking. Telling God I'm sorry because I'm living with somebody acting like we're married and we ain't. And then going home and moving out. All right. Let me tell you something. Living with somebody for a long time don't mean you're married. Until you step before your God and your man of God and you exchange vows, you're not married. Hallelujah. Some humbling. I'm not going to hold on to my old life. I'm not going to hold on to my old identity. (laughs) You know what the Holy Ghost will do with some repenting will do? It'll take that old gangster walk out of you. (laughs) It'll fix your walk. You'll walk different. You'll talk different. You'll live different. You'll feel different about some things than you do right now. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated if you want to. 
God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. We were at a conference in Colorado Springs last week. And uh, this little girl from the home church, she'd been seeking the Holy Ghost for a couple years now. She'd come out of kids' crusade, just beaming, couldn't quit grinning. And somebody said, Briley Joe got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he gave it as early as last week. Don't tell me he's not giving it anymore. When you come down with faith like a child and just lift your hands and say, God, I know I got to have it. I want it more than anything in this world. God is faithful to give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so, again, if you need it tonight, I want you to cast off that doubt that you can't get it. I want you to cast off that unbelief that you don't need it. I want you to bind some fear that says, what's everybody going to say? What's everybody going to do? Hey, just get right with God and let him work out the details. Praise God. Uh, start right now preparing that offering for when we give the altar call tonight. You bring that sacrifice down here and say, God, consume it. Consume it. Consume it. Amen. Certainly, church, this there's many needs represented here tonight. Amen. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse number 28 says, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. I'm part of something bigger than me, Elder. We received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Uh, for our God is a consuming fire. Oh, too many people getting sunburned in church. <laughs> they get close enough just to get a little warm. Get close enough just to feel real good. Amen. How about y'all back here in the cheap seats? Y'all feeling what we're feeling up here? Amen. Y'all feel the Holy Ghost fire burning hot back here tonight? Amen. How about it when we give the altar call tonight? We clear out some cheap seats and everybody get to the altar tonight. Because I got a need and you got a need. And we serve a God that's an all-consuming fire. He can take care of every need in this place tonight. I believe God is insulted when we, when we treat him like some cheapskate. Well, so-and-so got a blessing. There went the one. There went the one strawberry cheesecake. I have to wait till next service. No, nah, he's an all-consuming fire. Amen. You bring every sacrifice in the building tonight to the altar and the Holy Ghost is going to fall and the power of God is going to move and that situation is going to turn around tonight. Our God can do anything. He that believeth in God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. He is a reward. He said, Brother Stewart, I've been down to the altar before. Preachers got red in the face and screamed and spit and tried to get me down there before. I didn't get my healing. I didn't get the Holy Ghost. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you've been prayed for before, get down here and get prayed for again. My God can heal anything. My God can heal allergies just as well as he can heal Alzheimer's. Well, I got prayed for it once 20 years ago. Bless your heart. You ought to have a big pimple on your forehead from that oil, from getting prayed for every service. Where is your faith? It's not unbelief to come and ask again. 
again. But when you come knocking again, Jesus, here I am again. He sees out his faith. You say, well, it's just a headache. Well, you like headaches? I got a rebuke. I hate to say this. I got a rebuke in the men's restroom one time from an elder in the church. Sit down. I'll tell you about it. I'd just gotten into church. And uh, I got nosebleeds a lot. And uh, so I'm in the men's room. Hold my nose. Wait for it to stop. The elder comes in there. What's wrong? I said, I get these, these stupid nosebleeds. He said, I used to too till I got prayed for. I ain't had one since I got prayed for. Hey, if God will heal a nosebleed, what's your excuse? What is it that you won't bring to God? What's that situation that you've just been kind of tucking in your pocket and bringing to church every week? Jesus is calling you out tonight to get that out before him. Oh, we almost got you on board. We almost got you there. Oh, just a few more minutes of the Holy Ghost moving and we might get somebody excited enough and full of faith to come and respond. It ain't going to offend me one bit if somebody just goes ahead and decides, I want it right now. It ain't going to offend me. I don't have to finish preaching. When you and God get ready to handle your business, that's between you and God. I said it's between you and God. If you provide the sacrifice, we serve a God that still answers by fire. If you need the Holy Ghost, you come down here tonight understanding he died on a cross so you can have the Holy Ghost. Jesus' name, I plead the blood over every situation in this place tonight, over every sickness, over every disease. I plead the blood over high blood pressure. I plead the blood over cancer. I plead the blood over sugar diabetes.
Ah, uh, uh, here, here it is. Here it's falling. Here it's falling. God's working right now. People get in their healing right now. Reach out in faith. Reach out in faith. People respond.